hours ago. Um, my name is Philip Beck. I'm a CEO of a company called Louvre. These are my kids um, at home through Skype on the sofa. Looks very nice. Um, as you can see, um, Skype is really part in my life. Um, that is in Vegas. But kids are at home. I'm still connected to them. That's great. Um, as I said, my name is Philip. Um, I'm the CEO of Louvre. And we developed basically a uh, contact center called Lux. And in this contact center, I want to show you a little bit how the Skype to link integration can really bring, to, or bring you to um, success. Um, a little bit out of scope style. <laughs> but uh, what I would like to do is bring you a little bit Skype closer. Why Skype? Why we do that? That's kind of business communication. Um, then we go through the APIs. Just a brief overview that you see in which direction it goes uh, from Skype APIs, link APIs. I cannot tell too much. If you want to go deeper into APIs, uh, there are folks in here I can direct you to, and uh, you can see where it's going to. Then we bring Link and Skype together. What do you need to do that? And we want to have to look into really what's needed to get Skype into customer service. Um, afterwards, I'm really happy to answer your questions and probably see one or two of you in the party later on. As I mentioned in the beginning, um, Skype is part of my life, not only privately, but also in business. So the question is, how we can use this fantastic tool or this platform um, to improve business relations. Starts with some figures. Um, 300 million users every month online and Skype. Not just, uh, yeah, we have 10 million or something like that. We have 300 million users in Skype every time, every month. That's like the population of the US. You have to think about that probably for a second. This is the voice minutes count. 554 billion voice minutes. That's like if you want to press that to CDs. That's even bigger than the Mount Everest. Every day. That's huge, isn't it? And what comes as next is 33% of every call is video. That's huge. But this is all peer-to-peer -peer communication. Now, why should we bring Skype to the contact center? Think of a 0800 number, which you want to have in your contact center for free access for your customers. Think of the bill you pay every month to the PSTM provider to get this 0800 number. Think of just throwing this bill away because your customers are using Skype. This is one point. As well, with Skype, they have a unified communication client, as Link is. So they can use chat. Do you want to spell any names on the phone? Why? When you can type it or send a chat message. They don't misspell it afterwards, so that would be great, isn't it? And we have, can have video. I was in the session this morning about Skype and video, and they really, really promised it will get out soon, <laughs> whatever soon means. But it will go out soon. Uh, so you can video federate link um, with Skype. And then it gets more, even more and more interesting. We have several customers in Switzerland um, and in Europe where you go, really want to have that, not only on the RFP, but really on their mark that they want to have Skype communi or video communication in their contact center. They are now struggling, really, with the agent needs to have something in the back that doesn't look very scrumble, or they need to shave every morning, or they need to wear something like this and not coming to work by T-shirt. And this is really what they are facing about. It's more how to go to work or how work uh, than the technology. Technology is ready. Even you can have Skype on the mobile phone. You can integrate these people from the mobile, from the PC, of course, and as well from the TV. The picture I've seen before has been shot from a TV Skype client. Huh? Probably. It was a Skype to Skype call, yes, but 
not Skype to link integration, but it was on a Skype call, and this is really, really great. So let me take you, sorry, let me take you to the API. What kind of APIs do you know are available in Skype? Or let me rephrase the question. How many developers do we have here? Hands up. One, two, three, four. Okay. I have to change my slide desk a little bit on the fly. So, but you really have several um, APIs, or you had several APIs. But the message is, there is a desktop API, yes. There is a Skype kit, yes. But they are discontinued. They are not there anymore. Or, yes, you can still download, and yes, you can sh still develop, but mm, no, you shouldn't. Or, oh, you even can't download it anymore. But if you have downloaded it, there is good. Um, as well, but there are some Skype, but there are some Skype APIs that are still there, and they're, well, pretty not that bad. And this is the Skype URIs. Anyone knows what Skype URIs are? Yeah, you know, as always. Um, <laughs> that's just because I see him probably the fifth or sixth time, um, and we know each other, so don't worry. But there's some, um, some really good integration with Skype URIs. You can do amazing stuff with them based on let's say, click-to-call functionality. Um, click-to-call functionality is, um, is really good. And I want to make a short demo. But as I said, I'm from Switzerland. And in Switzerland, when we do things, um, we, we want to make sure things happen very well. We do it kind of slowly. You know what we say in Switzerland about the demo? Have you ever heard that? Demo? Huh? That's what it is. <laughs> That's how it's written. <laughs> so let me shortly show you how, how this is going to work. I have to switch over to my PC. Great. Works. And now, this is um, you know, this window. So this is not really what you probably can do or what you probably can do in the next release. It is what is available right now. So this is our website. And as you can see here, um, there is some fancy stuff with presence and so. So we have, take the link presence and push it out to our website. This is what, the, what this green uh, circle around my picture actually is. And we have several ways to contact me in this case. So let's, let's just face on the peer-to-peer -peer communication. Right, Makes it easier for the step right now. So I have a possibility to call me, to email me. Of course, we have SIP. We are open federation, no problem at all. But there's some Skype client there. Of course, um, nothing really fancy. I can get that away. I can get, of, get rid of that as well. You probably mentioned, if you look closely to this, there are some two. I get back to that in a second. But now I just issue a call. This kind of tool is part of a secret source. You know, in Masters, we always had some kind of secret source in the game. And this is one um, for the Skype URI, which is not very well documented, actually, but it works. And as you see, I'm now in a call, of course, between Skype and Link. I do not want to have the micro in here, because otherwise, modules So we stop that. But this is actually how it works today. You can initiate the Skype call by a URI um, to your link. And as you have seen, the presence changed to red because I was busy. So now what's going to happen here, or what do you need to know? The kind of a secret source is, as I already mentioned, this URI. I already copied it away. Let me open that. That's how it looks like. So this question mark call at the end of the line initiates directly a call. You can write chat there, then you get a chat. Um, but the call is yeah, most important for us. And the double semicolon two in between, the semicolons, the two in between the semicolons, tell Skype this is a link contact. That's kind of namespace they have in Skype to make sure, oh, this is not a Skype contact, this is a link contact. And this is what's going on. 
but they could probably name that a little bit better. So link integration or, or something like that would be more easy for us to read, but this is exactly what happens. So this too just means go on link um, and do not search for something in Skype uh, with this kind of name. Okay. Let me switch back to the, from the demo. One, here we go. Um, Skype APIs, as I said, are, do not very well um, give you possibility to um, customize stuff on Skype. Um, but there is some other way to customize unified communications. And in this case, the possibility to customize unified communications is really huge. So we have link server API, uh, we have UCMA, we have unified communication web API, which yeah, gets evolved and evolved. We have the client API, and there are some rumors that there will be a new API soon, but not yet there. And um, this is a really handful of stack of APIs, and every application developer in here would say, wow, that's great. I can do whatever I want with this kind of APIs. You can really do whatever you imagine from IVR to yeah, contact center to web chat to whatever. Doesn't matter. You can just do it. So with the server API, I get a little bit critic because people do not really know how to use it. But the rest, if you go into and um, you go to Unified Managed API, this is really where you can yeah, tweak link to do what you want, to do all the call routing stuff, to do all that kind of stuff. This is really, really good. So the API, how was the API? It's really, really powerful on, on link side, on the Skype side, they probably won't or will go away. But now, how to bring, if you didn't do it, so how many, um, not say information worker system administrators we have in the house here? In the system administrators? Okay. No developers. Um, link and Skype, to bring them together is mainly kind of this functionality, right? You want to bring chat and audio today uh, through Skype, through the internet, to on-premise customers. And you will do that through the edge. You will need an edge, of course. You will need uh, the provider set up in, in the edge to federate with Skype. And this is what you usually bring through um, yeah, from Skype to Link. Who was in the session this morning about Skype and video? OK, several. Um, let me short summarize what they have. You have here on the internet, from the internet and Skype, actually, they call it V1, what is actual, what's in this slide. They have some kind of mediation server in between to, yeah, to just pass it by, not to decode or to um, scramble the audio, but they have a mediation server in between, which will be an audio proxy, actually. With V2, which is coming, as I said, soon, um, they will get rid of this mediation server for audio and, media and video proxy. So they will not get over this server. Just signaling will flow through this server. But on the other hand side, audio will, will go the direct way uh, through your edge or directly if you're externally as well. It will flow between Skype and the link client directly. And this is really what we call basically in the on-premise installation, media bypass, right? They're just going to enable their um, server on the Skype border for media bypass, and you're good to go. Oh, this is basically what it goes to. And as I said, soon there will be video available as well. So I will be able to remove the Skype client from my desk and call my girls uh, from my link client. That will, that's really good. This is what you need to do on a side of um, setup. You need to tell Microsoft or the Skype network, hey, my domain at luvar.net or ch is in, belongs to me and I have a link installation. I want to have calls routed on this domain to myself or to my link installation. This you can do on 
pick.link.com, sign in, go through the process. It takes about 30 days or probably faster, but you, have, you cannot do it today for tomorrow demo or something like that. You have to take care of some time because they need to rewrite all their internal IDs so that this doesn't screw up at the end of the day. And you need to have an edge and enable federation. On the other hand side, on the Skype side, people need an MSA account, so a Microsoft Life ID, basically. They need to sign in to Skype with a Microsoft account because they will not bring this kind of um, information for, or this directory of Skype to federation, but they will, or they're doing the MSN network ID, the Life ID, federate with your um, company. And you need to have an actual uh, Skype version. So this is sometimes the issue why it doesn't work with every TV. If the TV is too old and has a Skype client on it, it doesn't have the right codec, so the communication would not work. But they are usually capable of updating. About this, we had a big discussion uh, this morning about this MSN and merged account um, stuff. So I would like to give you, for those who haven't been able to attend the session this morning, a little recap. So there will not be any federation to the Skype directory in the future at all. So the Skype directory as it is with your Skype login name will never be federated. People thought, oh, you could add at skype.com or something like that to the domain name and then just federate with this directory. This is not what's going to happen, at least what we had in the discussion this morning. What's going to happen is people are kindly forced to merge the Skype account to the Link account or to the MSN account. That's what's going to happen and it will be more prominent to get people away from the effective Skype account. Just as a little recap. Okay, so now enough of warm-up. Uh, we move on to the main topic of um, Skype and link integration in the customer service. One of the biggest problems, if you have ever done this, is that basically your contact, if you just add the contact and you have Skype Federation and peer-to-peer -peer everything works very, very well, you're going to add the contact and what you see is the contact is offline. But in link, it's not. So the question then is, what the hell is going on? In Link, I see the contact, I see it, see whatever it's possible to do, but in Link, I'm not a, or from Skype, I'm not able to see the presence there. Hmm. Okay, this is really one of the biggest issues because everything else works, but you have this issue that you can't chat. As you see, Skype is going to block you at the time you would like to start chatting because you're not allowed to because, hey, this contact is offline. You don't want to write in, right? So Skype blocks the user interface and says, hey, you can't write this person a message or call this person because the person is offline. So now it goes down to level three or 400 for those. Now we had some little marketing stuff. Why is this going to happen? why this is really going to happen. The reason is the following way. We, have a sub, we go now into SIP. In SIP for presence exchange, you're going to have some subscribe messages and notify afterwards. So this is what's going to happen if, if you trace on the Edge server. You get from the Skype to the link, you get a subscribe message. So, huh, I get the subscribe. So Skype is issuing the subscribe message to link. That's great. Step one, correct. So, now, second step, probably Link doesn't understand the subscribe message. No, he, sub he understands it. He responds with a 200 OK. Well, everything works well, even better. But that's not everything. That's just, oh, yeah, I get your int I've seen your interest in this person's or in this contact center um, SIP address. You are interested in this? Okay, I will get you the future changes on this. That's good. But 
Now we need to publish this presence. Now what you see next is some kind of notify message. Notify informs this is the presence of this kind of application or of this user. So, and this, what is correct as well, has this application PIT plus six amount. This is kind of, oh yeah, huh? public interoperability, XML kind of stuff. But you don't see what's in there. Hmm. And here comes the first part of the secret sauce. Um, you can trace these bodies. Uh, thanks to Jared. Not, no, it's not here. Um, one of my master colleagues, he wrote how to do that exactly in the resource kit book uh, of Link 2010 and Chapter 10. This is a short summary of what you need to do to get to the inside of these bodies. Actually, you, you will get or you will be able to trace some bodies here, but you will not get this specifically. Uh, another way to get there is um, using Wireshark or whatever tool you want to have to trace that files and use that to go for, um, uh, to capture the Wireshark traces and decrypt it. And then you're in this way as well. So if you go there, uh, you see this. And here you see the, the word which is probably wrong because we are available and it says, hey, it's closed. Why does it say it's closed? We are available. Come on. If you look on a user, how does a user look like here? Then I see, oh, he's busy and probably do not disturb. Yes or no. Um, and I see, oh, okay, this, this is how it should like, look like. But now, how can we make the first one look like this? There are basically two possibilities. Uh, one possibility, which is already very well documented in TechNet and MSDN, is there is a bot available uh, which will take this kind of subscribe message and will issue a notify message itself. And then you will bring in into the notify session whatever you want. But this requires an MSPL application and requires some kind of yeah, UCMA application work together, having a UCMA application installed on the front end, which was not supported until yeah, four or five months. Um, but now you can do that this way. Or you can do it and publish your own presence correctly. What does this mean correctly? This is some kind of the presence calculation in the server backend. There's what's, what's really going to happen if you say, I'm available. There are several different ways and places where the link server takes, shuffles together in his aggregation script, afterwards put into the different containers and feeds out to your subscribers. And there is one really important container you need to know or you need to be aware of if you want to publish information in a UCMA application. And this is this kind of interoperability container here. If you know this, you can probably feed that correctly via UCMA application and do a link server, the rest. Just his job he's used to do. And fill in this kind of directly. So, I want to show you that. How do we do that? How do we call that when you're in Switzerland? A demo. Once more. So, <laughs> help me switch over here. Here we go. Oh, just lost connection. Bad. I have to go to, to show you this. I have to go to um, our um, productive environment because in a lab you cannot show Skype Federation, right? So um, I will connect to our environment. I will show you the Skype client and what we do now, whoops, here we go. And please have in mind it's all going to be about this. This is now an application 
in UCMA and an endpoint, we're going to kind of trigger how, it's, how we're going to focus or change uh, the presence we want to publish and have that in here with this um, link. Let me add that to my favorites. So, so it's on the top and I see that better. Good. Okay, what are we going to do? This is now probably level 500. So don't worry if you do not get everything what, you, what I want to show you. But this is basically an application and we have here calculation of the presence well, before we publish it to the link server. So what you normally would see if you're a developer, you will do it like this. So there is a local state and the local state you can set according to, let's say, 3,000 is available, 6,500 is busy, 18,000 is offline or stuff like that. And this state then will give you, or when you publish that, you will become offline. But this is only half of this. As I said, if you want to trigger the aggregation script in the link server, you need to prepare everything link needs to calculate that correctly. And if you trace a little link client uh, when he changes presence, he's doing some weird stuff with this legacy interop, and this is what we exactly do here as well. So we generate some legacy availability XML right in the availability state, do that in the legacy interop container for different values, and then go and publish that out. So I will start this, this small application. Um, I've prepared, an, where is this? So here we go. So I have this um, UCMA sample 2 here, which is part of this application. It's still offline. I would like to set this application now to busy. So I'll just issue this command. And in the back it will publish busy and let me show you that by side by side. Here we go. You see, yes, the bot is busy. But there is still nothing available on the Skype. Why? Because we did not say, hey, publish Skype as well. And I'll go and say, yeah, I want to set the pick status as well. So I go there and say, uh, paste, set pick. And now I have to publish it again. Let's say we now say um, available. So here it comes and it's available in Skype as well. So now if it's available, I can of course start, start the chat and it will respond with some bot and say, oh, you just typed hello. Right, And as soon as I go back and say, oh no, I want to reset the pick state. You can do that, of course. Just clear everything we did in this kind of interoperability container. It will throw out again and I have just availability here. Right? So I can, with this little, it's just have you seen five lines of code? I can trigger the link server this way that it behaves like I would like to have it in our or in this kind of situation. Yes, one question there. <laughs> Any scalability concerns with thousands of Skype users? Um, how to answer that correctly? So if you compare it to what, what we do here. You, I will come to that later on, but le let's point it out here as well. So you have both scenarios have drawbacks, right? So in case of you have to take care of something else. Here we have five lines of code, 
and you're good to go mainly. Um, on the other hand side, you have this UCMA bot from Microsoft, from MSDN. If you download that, you will not be able to say anything beside I'm there. And if someone changes the presence to offline or if there's nothing there anymore, the people will just see, hey, it's there. And that's the same behavior as it has when do it this way and have 10,000 of subscribers, right, at this stage. Because now we have the normal link um, maximal followers reach scenario you probably are aware of. But this can be, can be handled with kind of set this to a higher mark, right? So we have seen customers, they are doing this in a separate pool, right? Separate pool because they are not so, yeah, our Skype really good. Um, kind of security discussion we have there as well. When many hits, do we have a denial of service attack? So they're spread it out, made to separate pool, UCMA, and there you can set this limit to just whatever you want, right? It doesn't care. Um, there is still a limit for UCMA if you want to do or want to get rid of. Um, <laughs> really? Do you want to answer that question? No? Okay. Good. Um, <laughs> you just looked around. Oh. He is selling something wrong. Um, no, you can you can just go over the limit if you know how. That's possible. But but it's kind of supportability statement, right? You have to take care. On the other hand side, if you go with this bot, you have to make sure that you sell you handle the subscriptions yourself. So if something changes, update all um, all clients and this kind of stuff. Yes? So what you say, you Yes? Um, you do not have this acknowledgement process because Bob acknowledges everything automatically. So at the time you add this, to your Skype address list, um, it takes about a minute or half a minute uh, until it goes to the automatic process of acknowledgement, and then you see the presence, right? So it takes, it automatically, if it's a bot, it accepts automatically this kind of requests. You do not have to add it um, to you, whatever, to the bot application at all. If you would change, so what do you mean by response group actually? Um, yes, but you will not be able to do that in, can, in this kind of way, right? You will not be able to go to response group and say, hey, these are five lines codes, please include that in your response group publish presence kind of situation. They could do that, yeah, but I'm, think, I'm not sure if they will do that, if you're gonna ask for. As well, if you, you have to add this kind of zip, they will not, but if you have this kind of zip address for a response group, have you ever seen that? That's kind of this big. You don't want to type this in the Skype client. Yeah, you have to tweak several stuff around there. Okay. Yeah, one question, the rest I will take to the QA at, uh, at the end. Yes, please, Chris? Okay. Uh, do you have any issues with the uh, uh, um, how, do you, how do you mean this presence I'm going to publish will never expire until I go and change it? Yes. No, no, it's okay. So, but when you go and say, and shut down the application, so let's, let's say to a way that we have seen this as well. That takes a little bit long. But if you're gonna set that to a way. And we also have this bot away. And now, if we shut down the application, Uh, 
it will go to offline anyway. So this is kind of yeah, what, what you probably ask for, right? It will just get this, and, and afterwards it will not be requested anymore, so you get flooded your edge with requests that are, when you have 10,000 of subscribers, you have to take care of your edge. Okay. So this was kind of the secret source I promised you, right? Um, so let me switch back to uh, the presentation. And um, I just have for your reference, and when we distribute that to other kinds of uh, person which haven't been able to attend the party, this is basically how uh, the important steps in the UCMA application, right? So we generate the XML, publish it and to the different containers, and then um, call that together and publish that to the link server, and link server will do the rest. So this is basically, or these kind lines of code, which are necessary to enable any UCMA application for presence, IM, and voice integration to the um, contact center and to Sky. This is what happens afterwards. Looks like this. So you have the keyword open here, and this will trigger Skype to say, oh, he's available. Huh, I can now have a call with him or whatever you want. Or it's going to away um, in this case, and then you have almost everything you want to have. Let me take that to another demo. Um, and I got some questions today if, if this really works as well in, the, in a, a contact center scenario with escalation to all different kind of, um, to all different kind of triggering that together, having chat and voice together in one window. Uh, we had a, kind, a little discussion in the, in the last session if this would be possible. And I would like to show you that it really is. If you want to start with a voice call, and then move on to, let's say, um, chat, because you don't want to spell anything, um, that's the way to go. So I'm going to enable me for the contact center here. And um, to show you how that, that this really works as well, um, together with the Skype URI, which brings the solution uh, really on this way. So we have on the website, let's talk to um, Skype, to the solutions on our side. I'm an agent there. I'm going to hit that, and of course, it comes here again with two, right, to show the namespace. Um, that's a user. I can, or that's a link user, or a link endpoint. And I can show, do not show me that again if I want to, but it's OK. Now it's going to call um, my IVR. I can hit press 1 for this or press 2 for that. Um, I can do this. And at the end of the day, it will come in here as a link call, right? Through all the IVR stuff, through all whatever you name it, um, and will hit you here. Oh, sorry for that. And I can have CRM integration here or whatever you want. Yeah, I know my microphone is muted. Thanks, guy. Um, I can even have a campaign here. Um, on a website which guides you through the process of selling something. That's really in link. But now I would like to say to the customer, hey, you know, you search for something. You want to know what? Uh, this is on here. You know what? How long does this take to spell that? Probably quite long, right? But well, as I said, we are not here to spelling such things. It will go through several stages, will cross the ocean twice, once to Zurich, and should come back. Um, and then I will see that here. Yeah, here we go. It was too early. But I get that in the same window and I can now chat back and forth, right? And the customer on Skype will never see who is actually um, working behind that. 
so that it will not directly kind of contact this person afterwards. So we still have this kind of, hey, this is this person, or this is the service and not the person. You see that here? We would be able to escalate that, but it's actually turned off. I've heard it will change soon, <laughs> again, um, to this. Exactly. Okay, that's how it works. That was looks, just for short. And um, these are some references for you guys if you would like to have anything here. Um, we will push the sample application you have shown before um, on our website. Um, there's a link to the UCMA um, bot stuff and um, some traces for Wireshark and this PITF subscribe information on the MS Press site, which is kind of weird to find if you not know exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so I don't want to take that too long because I think everybody will like to go to the at and party and get ready for that. Um, if there are any questions, questions I had to stand back before, I'm happy to take that now. I have some books here from Danny about Microsoft Link and Unified Communications, so everyone who asks a question will get a book. So, yes, sir, first in the first row, sorry. Yeah, so I have a question. Uh, surely you have a uh, Microsoft Link workaround. What workaround? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you with this kind of workaround, or what do you mean, actually? Um, yeah, link to Skype is not working every time um, with the presence, that's correct. Um, what they say is, or what Microsoft says is, okay, um, we are working on that. Um, what the customer says is, I don't really bother. Because if it works, I get rid of the 0900 to call. If it doesn't work, yeah, it, it should. But we are on a ramp of improvement. Um, we have seen these outages a lot, let's say, in Orchards last year, um, and they are dramatically fallen down, and now we have it probably once a week or something like that. Not even that, basically. But I'm not sure. We are not tracking them, actually. Okay. Um, the distribution of this kind of solution is it's, um, it's a real contact center solution and we do not need any response groups for that. Um, so we do, basically we do the, all the call routing stuff, all the monitoring stuff ourselves. Uh, we just need, or we leverage the link platform um, to deliver all these calls um, to the people they want to have that. So. Yes, so you, well, what you will do in, in Link, if you would like to deploy that, what I would like to have you, um, is add another t um, trusted application pool with uh, trusted application servers, install our software there, and you're good to go. So a normal deployment process takes about two or three days, and then you're out the first call, right? With everything, Link, and all, all together. And this is really, really, well, not that bad, I think, for a call center installation. Okay, can I give that to you and you hand it back to him? Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, you can do that definitely. Um, this is, this is um, one part you can do. You can, that's, there's a header in the web request which says, hey, I have Skype. Um, the other 
So the other possibility is actually to have audio and video directly in the web browser, right? Um, and then you can differentiate between is it an old web browser and yes, Skype installed? Then let's start Skype. Is it a new web browser and is WebRTC capable or it have whatever plugin you need to ha have that installed? Then make this one. If both doesn't work, uh, then go back and, and use the callback scenario. Oh, that's, that's what we already have here in our web chat as well. Uh, we have some kind of web chat, and if it doesn't go further, we have this callback scenario. And in Link, it just looks good because it's the unified approach, right? In Link Client, you have first a chat, and then the customer says, hey, I would like to escalate to voice, and you just click on escalate voice, and you get connected to him on his mobile phone or whatever he wants to call, right? Okay. I have. Yes, please? Sorry, once more, please. Yeah. Yes, that's, that was actually a bot. Yes, you can do that, of course. As soon as the bot is able to answer the call, also the question is, let me repeat the question for short. Uh, the question is, is it able to to call a bot uh, from the Skype URI? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, a little bit more answer is the bot has to accept the call and that kind of stuff. But yes, it's possible. Yes, please. You probably saw that we have a picture here um, in... Uh, where where we is, so we go to solutions, and um, here we go. And you have for the solutions, you have this kind of a picture in there. You want to have that in Skype, right? Um, no. Oh, sorry for that. Yes, of course. I mean, here, here it's possible because it's normal contact card and we have for the IVR or for the contact object, we have a picture. Uh, customers like that typically, especially if they have one agent serving several services, then he doesn't have to read on a third-digit phone, oh, what, what service have you call now? Uh, he see a picture and the picture tells more than 1,000 words, you know. And this, this really got, but it doesn't go to Skype. Yeah, for the UCMA bot, it looks like this. This is when you don't publish any picture URL in the contact card of the bot, uh, but you can easily do that by, yeah, by changing this kind of, or by doing something here. When you go to the contact card, you just add a picture URL to the contact card, and then internally and through federation, picture see the contact card and the picture. Good now, exactly. Sorry? That can, be that can be overwritten. Link internally and link to link in federation scenarios, you will see the picture actually. So you can, if you want, if you want to do that, you can add, you can add the solution, solutions at luver.net uh, to your federated contact or the contact list and link. You will see the presence and you will see the picture there as well. This is possible, but you will not get it into Skype. So if someone adds you on Skype like this, it will always, always be this kind of picture and nothing, nothing else. They, there they have to work on. I'm sorry I'm out of books, but I will get you one afterwards. One more question or more questions so far? No? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know where the custom present state is, actually. It's kind of an extension of Microsoft to, let's say, the present states. And it doesn't really fit into this kind of um, interoperability um, stuff. So we will not bring custom present states through Federation to the um, Edge or no, to the Skype scenarios. Because it doesn't fit in this, this uh, interop XML. Uh, there's no place to say that or to, to save that. Uh, so it's not possible to get it through. Yes, yes, 
That's exactly why I put it there. <laughs> Another question? No? Okay, then I would like to thank you and um, probably see you afterwards in the party. Thanks.